Hey folks, we're going to talk about the atmosphere today, um, particularly two aspects of it that are going to affect the way it produces lift for us, and that is the temperature and the density. We'll also talk about static and dynamic pressure, and we'll touch on the International Standard Atmosphere, ISA for short. Um, now, of course, the atmosphere is the medium in which we operate and which our aerofoils operate and how they produce lift. It's the mix of gases that does that. But let's look at how density affects it. Density affects the mass of the air and its mass flow over the wings that helps to create the lift we need. Now, as we climb up through the air column, the density of the air uh, decreases. So that means that overall we get less mass flow over the wings and that produces less lift. Um, we can do something about that, of course, in the lift equation. If we rob density, we can replace it with V squared. So in other words, if there's not as much density, we just have to fly a bit faster. And that does it. Um, the speed over the airflow then restores us to where we need to be. Mass flow then, important, lose the mass, restore it with, with speed, and we're back to square one. We're back to having the amount of lift we need. Excellent. Um, now, air is a very powerful force, as we've seen. It, it hasn't got a lot of mass, 1.225 grams per cubic meter. But when you move it sideways or vertically, it has a lot of force to be reckoned with. So we've got to think about, for example, the damage you can do with a hurricane to the side of a building. Um, air is also compressible and its natural way is it wants to fly from high to low pressure. So that is a really important factor of air. It flows naturally from high to low can also change its shape, a bit like toothpaste in a tube. If we squeeze it, it all goes to one end. Of course, it's not as dense or as thick as, as uh, toothpaste, but it still has got effects like that. So if we fill a toy balloon up with air and let the end go, we know the balloon flies, flies around the room, don't we? Um, that's another example of the, uh, of the pressure of the air exerting itself. Um, now, the bit we're interested in, the atmosphere, is up to about 40,000 feet. Uh, and it goes from surface to 40,000 feet or so with gradual changes all the way through. Um, the lower layers contain the greater part of the, uh, of the mass of the atmosphere. Uh, in fact, you know, a quarter of the thickness of the atmosphere is more than half of the weight or mass of the air. So atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure comes in two forms. Static pressure is around us all the time. It acts on everything above my hand, below my hand, everywhere. Um, static pressure is acting upon it and, and about 14 and a half pounds for every square inch at sea level. Um, the temperature drops all the way as well. Uh, it drops all the way down. So static pressure is the atmosphere pressing down on the column of air beneath it. As easy as that, really. Um, think of it like a big pile of marshmallows, if you like. It should exert the same force per square metre on all the parts of our aircraft. Now, of course, the lower the altitude we're at, the greater the force per square metre. It's called static pressure because it's nothing to do with movement. It's just the weight of the air above us. So aircraft, cars, trees, you and me, we've all got static pressure acting on us all the time. Now, we use newtons per square metre for that. We express it in hectopascals. Now, the pascal is quite a tiny unit. So 100 pascals equals about 30 feet at sea level. That's a pretty standard atmosphere for us. Um, hecto means 100 from Greek. So that's the unit we use. Fair enough. Um, static pressure varies. It's about 1,000 hectopascals at sea level or 30 inches of mercury. If you want to be precise, 1,013.25 hectopascals and 29.92 inches of mercury. And that is the international standard atmosphere. So that's pressure. Um, static pressure anyway. The next thing we need to talk about is temperature. Now, we use Celsius or Kelvin. Um, either works for us. Kelvin is used for all our thermodynamic calculations. Celsius is our everyday measure. And Celsius has a sensible scale from zero to 100 for the freezing and boiling point of fresh water at sea level. 
Uh, Kelvin goes down to 273 uh, at zero degrees Celsius to minus 273 Celsius at zero Kelvin. We don't say degrees with Kelvin, we just say Kelvin. Now compare that to Fahrenheit, uh, and that has 212 for boiling point of water and 32 degrees Fahrenheit for the freezing point of water. Density um, is kilograms per cubic metre, and for that we would use the Greek lowercase letter rho. I know it looks like a P, but it isn't, okay? Now all of those things act together, density, pressure, and temperature and humidity all work together to give the atmosphere the characteristics that it's got at any given point. If density falls, um, static pressure will fall. It doesn't weigh as much. Uh, if temperature goes up, um, then the density will reduce. And if humidity goes up, the bizarre one, um, it actually gets lighter, the air gets lighter. We could say that pressure over temperature times density is a constant, or if you like, rho proportional to P over T. That's just an algebraic way of expressing what we've just said. OK, density changes then as the height goes, um, as density goes down, or rather as height goes down, the density will increase. And as the temperature goes up, the density will decrease. So density in the middle, height down, temperature up um, on the density side of it. Now, that brings us to the ICAO um, temperature, the ICAO rules on what a standard piece of atmosphere is. Um, a standard atmosphere, um, according to ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, has those standard values, uh, which you're about to see tabulated on screen. Um, it, it gives us something which we can calibrate all of our pressure instruments and all of our wind measuring equipment to. Um, it's plus 15 degrees Celsius at sea level. So ISA sea level is our datum for everything. So a temperature of plus 15, a pressure of 1013 decimal 25 hectopascals. We just say 1013. Who can see a quarter of a hectopascal? Um, density of 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter or 1225 grams and a temperature decrease of 1.298 degrees per thousand feet until we get to the tropopause, which in our latitudes is about 36,000 feet. Above that, it's isothermal from minus 56.5 up to about 30 kilometers. Um, there's the tabulated version of it there. You can see here we are at sea level, 15 degrees, 1013, 1225. And in terms of relative density, um, a unit of one. OK, so we'll look forward to seeing you when we get the rest of this for the next session on atmosphere.